Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about BeautyBox 4.0 within Final Cut Pro 10. It's a great new update for BeautyBox, and we'll be talking about the basics of BeautyBox, but we'll also be discussing the big new feature in 4.0, which is speed. In Final Cut, you're going to get near real-time performance, probably about 10 to 15 frames a second, uh, depending on how fast your video card is. In this case, we're running it on a new Mac Pro with the AMD D500 in it. If you have an older Mac Pro and you can get something like an NVIDIA Titan or one of their very high-end cards, you'll also see near to real-time performance and possibly even real-time performance on the NVIDIA cards because we've optimized it for CUDA as well as OpenCL. And so it gives the NVIDIA cards just a little bit of an advantage. But it's still super fast on the new Mac Pros. And that's what I'm showing it on here. So uh, let's dive into it. The first step, as always, is to come down to your effects palette. And you can get to that by clicking on these squares right here, if that's not already selected. Come down to Digital Anarchy and grab Beauty Box, and we'll drop Beauty Box onto our clip. And as always, the first step when you're applying Beauty Box is to click on Analyze Frame. What this is going to do is run face detection and some other algorithms to figure out what the skin tones are. And you'll see our color chips up here, which indicate the skin tone, change once we click this. So I'm going to click Analyze Frame. It's going to figure out what my skin tones are and then make some adjustments up here. And that's going to create an automatic mask for us. And we can take a look at what that mask looks like by turning on Show Mask. Click on that, and we can see our black and white mask. So it's done a great job of selecting the skin tones for us. As with any mask, where you see white, the effect will be applied 100%. Where you see black, it won't be applied at all. And the shades of gray will get some percentage of the maximum effect. So if we have something like a 50% shade of gray over here, so we get exactly half of Beauty Box's smoothing amount. But we're actually going to improve this mask uh, in just a moment, but first let's discuss getting the amount of smoothing dialed in. And we do that by coming up to our smoothing controls up here. And let's zoom in 100% so that we can really see what we're working on. Okay, so she looks pretty good. If we turn the effect off, we can see what the original looks like. She's got a lot of skin damage, you know, some blemishes and acne and other stuff going on. And Beautybox does a nice job of reducing that. In this case, it looks a little bit too much. Uh, certainly we've lost a lot of contrast down here around the chin. And we can dial some of this back in by setting Contrast Enhance up to 100. And that'll help our contrast a bit. But we probably want to set this down just a little bit. So we're going to set both skin smoothing and skin detail smoothing to 25. And that's going to dial the effect back just a bit. And again, we can see what the before and after looks like. And that looks good. Now the goal with Beauty Box is really to apply a layer of digital makeup. We're still trying to keep her look real, so we're not going to be able to sandblast everything on her face into like one perfect plastic veneer. That's really not what we're going for. We're really going for a level of realism that you would find if you just had somebody with a little bit of makeup applied. You can certainly crank the settings up and get sort of a plastic sort of a look, but that's going to look kind of fake and probably not what most people are going for. And it's certainly not what Beautybox does by default. You know, so yes, there are still, you know, you can still see a little bit of the acne up here, but overall it looks much nicer than, you know, the original did. Her face is definitely cleaned up. We haven't lost too much contrast, and overall it looks pretty great. Now, one thing that we can do is take a look at our mask and maybe tighten the mask up a little bit. One way of doing that is to grab our mode pop-up and select our add color tool. And we'll let's zoom out just a little bit. And we're gonna use this to add in additional skin tones, sort of expand the skin tone range. Because you can see that you know her cheek is, of course, obviously skin. Uh, so we would like that more included. So we can grab the Add Color tool and just click on those areas. And it will start dialing that in a little bit more. 
Now we don't necessarily want everything. I mean, for example, her eyebrows are up here and we don't want the smoothing applied to the eyebrows for sure. Certainly not the eyes. We definitely don't want it applied to her teeth. So all these are good examples of where Beauty Box should not be applying the smoothing. But on the cheeks, we definitely want it. Uh, a little bit of contrast in the cheeks and on the other skin areas is fine. You know, these are really applying to highlights, uh, brighter areas on her skin, and we probably should keep those. Uh, some of the other areas down here, like on her neck, those we can click on, kind of enhance those skin tone ranges. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. One of the other things we can do is constrain the values of the mask. And we do that by adjusting, for example, saturation range and value range. Let's set both of these to 10. And you can see that this is going to increase the contrast of our mask. Really helps reduce the amount of hair that's going to be picked up. There's going to be very little hair that's affected by the smoothing and overall creates a little bit better mask. So these are ways that you can adjust your mask if you need to. You know, by default, Analyze Frame is gonna do a very good job of selecting the skin tones, and more often than not, that's pretty much all you need to do. But if you really do wanna tighten your mask up, you can come in here with these controls and make that happen. So now that we have our mask, we can turn off Show Mask. And again, we can turn the effect off to see how she looks. Just a layer of digital makeup that makes her look quite a bit nicer. One of the other interesting things that we can do with our mask is use it to control the color correction. So Beauty Box has some color correction controls built into it. In this case, we're gonna give her skin a little bit of a warmer tone. We're gonna set the hue to 10. And that's gonna add just a little bit of pushing it more towards the warmer side. And then we're gonna set the saturation down to say like minus 15 to take some of the redness out of it. And again, we can see what that looks like. Really creates a much nicer look for her. And once we set this up on one frame, it's pretty much good to go for the entire sequence. You'll notice that in this clip, once I play it back, and again, we're running at near real time in full 1080p HD. And we're getting probably about 15 frames a second. So it's not quite real time, but it's pretty close. And you can see that, you know, as we move around, Beauty Box is tracking the skin tones and applying our skin smoothing settings to every frame without us having to do anything at all. And so she looks great throughout the entire video clip, regardless of whether she you know, does a hair flip or moves out of the frame and comes back in. Beauty Box is tracking those skin tones and is going to remember what you want to apply to her whenever she's on screen. So that's a really great feature about Beauty Box. One of the things that made it fairly famous and pretty much the industry standard for doing this type of automatic beauty work. It's just a great plugin for doing it. Uh, one of the other things that we added in 3.0 was presets. So if you want to have preset looks, uh, you can select from presets here. And this will add different color effects and different types of special effects just to give your footage a slightly different look. Go for sort of an old timey look if you're shooting a Western or something like that. But in this case, we are not shooting a Western, so I'm just going to set this to none and get it back to our original footage. Shine removal was another great feature we added, and this helps reduce any shine that you get from bright lights um, or oily skin. You know, that combination can really create some very bright highlights. In this case, it's not so much of a problem, so we're not going to need to fiddle with it, but it is definitely there and can definitely be very helpful if you are shooting out in the sunlight or something and you have like very bright highlights. Now, one thing that's very important is the use GPU checkbox. And as mentioned before, Beauty Box is using the graphics cards. It's using the GPUs on the graphics cards. And this is great. It really speeds up the plugin. But we're not the only program using it. So Final Cut's trying to use your GPU. Other plugins may be trying to use it. We're all trying to get access to the same resources. And occasionally, that will cause problems. It may cause crashing. It may cause other weirdness to happen. 
Uh, so if you encounter that, one quick and easy way of fixing it is to turn off the GPU. Uh, this will definitely slow down Beauty Box, but if you're in a crunch and you don't have time to troubleshoot, you know, really what's going on, forcing Beauty Box to use a software renderer instead of the GPU can be very helpful. Now, one thing to know that is if you encounter a crash, Beauty Box will often disable the GPU automatically. And so if you're running into slowness, if it's not rendering as quick as you think it should be, you might want to check the about box here, click on this question mark, and make sure that enable OpenCL or enable CUDA is selected, depending on which graphics card you have. You know, check that and then, you know, double check that use GPU is turned on as well here, if you're encountering performance issues. If you're running into crashes, then really what you want to have is GPU to be off to make sure it's just not a graphics card issue. And of course, you can always email us at sales at digitalanarchy.com you know, if you have any questions or if you would like our valuable expertise. So that's really all there is to the basics of Beautybox 4.0. It's a very quick and easy way of applying excellent digital makeup. Beautybox is really recognized as the standard for which all other plugins like this are judged against. We've been around for four years and we're very excited to have real-time rendering. Those of you that have been around since 1.0 have known how slow it can be. Now, certainly 1.0 was very slow. But, you know, to do this type of work, to give the quality that Beautybox gives you, and to do it automatically requires a lot of processing power. And so that's one of the reasons that it's really taken a combination of new algorithms from us and the increase in speed in the graphics cards that you're seeing from AMD and especially NVIDIA that allow us to use that GPU and really speed our algorithms up. So we're very excited about the speed. We think it's pretty awesome. We think you'll be extremely happy with it as well. Uh, check out digitalanarchy.com for more tutorials, free filters, other interesting stuff that you can download, and of course, trial versions of all of our other great products, including Flickr Free for removing Flickr from your video. But thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you in the next tutorial.